and welcome to Kismet Rising. So today I'm doing a pick a card reading and we have five decks here. And the question we're asking is, what can we expect in love in 2024? All right, so go ahead and make your selection. It's um, option number one, which is your wheel of, of the year um, tarot. It's option number two, which is just your radiant rider white tarot. Option number three, which is your whimsical tarot. Uh, option number four, tarot of the spirit. And option number five, the chrysalis tarot. So go ahead and make your selection. And we are going to find out what can we expect in terms of love in this year of 2024. Okay, for, so for those of you who've chosen the option number one, the wheel of the year tarot, we asking what can we expect in terms of love for this year 2024 and what do we need to know what can we expect what do we need to know who can we look forward to what do we need to be aware of and what are some of the lessons that we need to learn during this year Okay, so for those of you who've chosen the first option uh, and you've chosen the Wheel of the Year Tarot, um, we've asked the question, what can we expect in love in 2024? And we have two kings here. We have the King of Swords and the King of Wands. And the King of Swords represents one type of personality and the King of Wands represents another type of personality. The King of Swords here, in terms of love, would represent somebody who's quite open about what it is that they want to say to you and quite clear about what it is that they want. They'd be very clear about where they stand. They will also um, be quite just in the way that they treat you. They'll make sure that they treat you fairly. Um, he, you know, t treating you in the correct manner, t treating you righteously is a, a, a priority for them. So they they would be somebody who would really put your needs first and and assess the situation and really be able to manage their emotions and be able to convey those emotions to you in a manner that is uh fair to you and kind to you they will also be somebody who's quite good with words and the way in which they uh, articulate themselves they they really really good at articulating themselves now sometimes this king gets a bad rap um, I would say that in all my time with reading cards, um, this King of Swords is somebody who's really gentle, really kind, really warm, uh, but very clear, very clear and very articulate about what it is they want and what it is that they don't want. They won't play games with you. They won't try to insinuate what it is they like or want. They won't, won't try to manipulate you in any way. They are very, uh, well, especially not in this upright position. They're very clear, basically, that, uh, about what it is that they need and want. Um, it's not to say that this person is actually going to be uh, always clear in themselves. But as far as they relate to you, they are very clear. As far as they are engaged and related, relating to you in any manner, 
that person is that way. Now, this card could represent somebody who's coming into your life who is like that, or it could represent yourself and different stages that you'll go along in your in your year. So the first way in which one can read these cards is that these two figures here come into your life or are in your life or feature prominently in your life. And this is you overcoming certain harm or certain hurt that you've experienced in the past to be able to move on from that and to be able to get to a better place, which is what the Six of Swords here are talking about. Um, that's one way of reading the cards. Another way of reading the cards is to say that here you have this, and I'll go with into each card in detail as I have with the King of Swords. Uh, the other way of reading these cards is to say that, well, there's two guys here or two persons in your life, really, male or female, who represents the, these different characteristics. And there's a kind of competition between them two. You need to make a decision between the two of them. Um, you know, there's... The, this card features two people, but it's a five of wands. And the five of wands can often refer to a competition of sorts. It's in the reverse position. So I feel like it might be a subtle a competition or it might be something that it might have looked like there was competition, but you're moving on from looking at it in that way and it's no, not really a, a competition. Um, you have the two here of swords and it's there's still there's also two people featured here and then there's one person here featured. So I'm not read, reading this necessarily in a linear fashion, um, and it's not one event, you know, taking place after the other. It's more like there are these people in your life. They'll be representing certain things in your life through their time. But I feel that where you will be or what it is, what's necessary for you is to kind of heal yourself and look after yourself and actually ensure that uh, you putting your own needs first here and that your healing is the priority of the situation, that you can remove yourself if need be in order to ensure that your healing is prioritized. OK, so I'm going to go into this a little bit further and I'm going to describe this king of wands to you. So this is somebody who represents um, um, somebody who is actually quite uh, sporty. It can They can be quite sporty. They're quite energetic. They really uh, like, they may like sports or they may uh, be engaged in some kind of sports, like working as a coach or something like this. Uh, they may be somebody who's, who just has a lot of energy and likes to do stuff outdoors a lot. Uh, they, they have, they, they just get up and go people. You won't find a, a king of wands relaxing. They've always got something going on. They're quite busy. Their lives are full of things going on. They're also quite robust. They are very, uh, they will go after what they want. Uh, it won't, you know, whereas the King of Swords will be can be quite reserved about it. The King of Wands is somebody who will see what they want and will go after it. Now, if you do ask a question, um, how does the King of Wands feel about me? Or what is the outcome in a particular relationship uh, about the King? Uh, where, where, and it shows you the King of Wands. This is not necessarily... Um, nest, meaning that that person's going to move towards you and, and and react in that King of Wands way towards you. Because I think the King of Wands is somebody who's quite in, uh, involved in themselves. They're quite involved in themselves. They're not as sensitive as the King of Swords. They're not as um, emotional as the, the King of, of Swords. In fact, the King of Swords won't show you their emotional side, but they are, are rooted in emotion. I feel like your your king of wands here is likely to be extremely passionate, uh, extremely robust, you know, really very uh, determined to get what they want, to, to do what they want to do. And sometimes that is the most important thing for the king of wands and nothing else is, is that as important as what it is that they want. Okay. And then... As we see here, we have this uh, five of wands and the card is reversed. Now, the way in which I read this card is that there might have been some kind of competition, but it's subdued. There might be something in the background 
that's a competition that's subdued. It could be that there's a, some kind of jealousy or uh, a kind of competitiveness that exists between two people, between perhaps you and another person, or between two other people competing for you. Uh, it could be that there's this kind of uh, somebody somebody goading you on, somebody saying, oh, well, you know, I think I can do this better than you can. Or perhaps you could do better than that. And they're trying to goad you on. They're trying to um, get you to do something that they don't necessarily... Um, yeah, that they, they don't necessarily need to be in that position. You know, they don't necessarily need to do that for you. That is not something that you need them to do for you. But I feel here that they that is something that they can do. It could also mean that it's not necessarily just a, a, a good uh, competition, a healthy competition, where two people are engaging with each other to try to better each other and better the game. It, it can be that this person it has some other intent that there's there may be some maliciousness or some something in there that's really not to your benefit let's put it that way i think maliciousness is a bit of a strong word in this context but uh there could be somebody who has not the best intentions okay with the with this card as well it can mean many different things in different contexts and because i'm reading for a whole lot of you uh, I'm not, you know, able to, to identify if it's, you know, you, one person, uh, whether it applies to you or not. So I'm just giving you all the different options and you can see what, what applies to you and what doesn't. I would say that if you get this card like this in this reading, what you need to do is just pay attention to uh, how things are unraveling around you, what people's, what the people that you're engaging with, what their um, underlying uh, motivations are, what their subconscious leanings are, and how it is that they are trying to influence you or trying to mold you or trying to push you in a particular direction. Okay, I think that is what this card is warning of. Now here we have the. Uh, two of swords and it's reversed and I think that when you have the two of swords reversed it could mean that there was a situation where here there was some kind of competition there was some kind of um, engagement or conflict actually and he, there was you were you were turning a blind eye to it you were perhaps not engaging with it you were choosing to wear blindfolds you were choosing to not uh, be engaged with it. And here, what I'm seeing is that you've taken that off. You have decided to see things for what they are. And you've decided to uh, understand the situation for what it is. You were able to look at it raw and see what it is and absorb the impact of what is actually going on. So if there's been something going on here with either these two people or this, these two people here, then you're able to actually see it for what it is and be honest with yourself about it and then just be able to move on from it, I think. Or, or what is, you're able to, this is the card of you being able to see it for, for what it is, being able to take that blindfold off, being able to see it for what it is. Your guard is still up. You are still uh, concerned. There is, it's not to say that you've just, you know, you're, you're jolly and you're okay and all is forgiven. You are still cautious. And, uh, but you are, you have taken you know, your gloves off, you have taken the blindfold off. I don't feel that you were ready to engage in conflict or ready to fight with somebody, even though they are these two swords here. Um, you have been able to maintain a fair and balanced distance from the situation. And I think it's to everyone's um, benefit. And then as we have this card here, which is a card of you just taking yourself off to somewhere, moving on from a particular situation, Perhaps there's been two people in your life that you've been in love with and you've been trying to figure out how it is that you deal with that or these people and you then you've kind of seen things for what they are. You've come to some kind of realization and then you're finally able to move on from them. Okay. Um, in terms of love, I feel that overall there is possibility for love because you have literally people here. You know, you have 
some you have two people here all right who are facing you who are looking at you in an upright position and they are there are options that you have you might be also here interested in somebody that you you cannot have um, or here you could be coming to that realization that you cannot have that person and this card can mean in most instances it does mean you're removing yourself from a situation to in order to heal in order to bring yourself away from the from those people that situation so that you can have a a different perspective of it but i think here this could also mean somebody that you meet or somebody that you know you get involved with who is uh involved in perhaps um in sailing or boating or uh canoeing or, or something like this something to do with the water perhaps or perhaps even working in in building boats or something like that so there is somebody it could represent somebody in some of your is some for some of you uh however for i think a few of you it will definitely represent you bring yourself to a state of healing that's what i see for you for the year 2024 um and i think that if you are um you know wanting to go out and date people you are going to have interesting options you may have to make a decision as to those options you may need to take some time out in order to make a decision um i think that regardless the year is going to be one where you do have to make decisions because there are more than one there is more than more than one person in your life uh and i think that as you go through the year you're going to be f- able to find out more about these people and you're going to be able to understand more once you allow yourself to understand more about the situation and ultimately you are in a space of healing and this leads to greater healing in your life okay so for those of you chosen option 1 that's your reading as far as what it what can we expect in terms of love in 2024 i hope that helps you i hope it resonates do let me know as the year goes by uh if you encounter this king of swords and this king of wands and uh, and how it goes all right and all the best for you i'm wishing you all lots of love of you've chosen the second option i'm using the radiant white tarot deck and we're asking what can we expect in terms of love in 2024 what can we expect in terms of love in 2024 so i'm going to be looking at whether we'll find love what to what can be we be warned of what uh, do we need to be careful of what advice we need to take and yeah how it is the year going to pan out in terms of love? Okay, so this is a very nice spread. Uh, it's a very interesting spread. I think that as you begin the year, you're going to find that you may have already or, or you will have um, some kind of interaction with somebody where you feel like you've seen them, they see you, where you are on the same page, where you might can, kind of feel like you, you can feel how they're feeling. Um, you might feel like you have some kind of intuitive connect, kind of connection to them and you might feel that the care and the love that you have for each other leads to the healing uh, of the world like it leads to two kind of separate parties coming together to bring healing in the world you know like something like a kind of Romeo and Juliet not to say not to say that this the ending of Romeo and Juliet applies to this card at all but just the kind of coming together sort of uh, uh in the, in the sense that it's the the Montagues and the the Capulets, you know, coming together and to make peace in a sense through the representation of Romeo and Juliet. 
so I feel like it's it's quite a reckoning in a, in a sense. Um, you know, it's almost like you could feel like you've met somebody who could be the one. It's fairly early stages, though, and it feels that even though you start the year feeling like this, and there is that feeling, and it's quite quite good. It's like almost too much of a good thing because after a while, um, you might lose interest, or that person might lose interest, or might what might happen is that you are so engaged with this person that it feels quite overwhelming. It feels quite like it's taking over your life in a way, and you might decide to take some space from this person or just uh, put some space between you two. You know, sometimes you could do that as well because you might be afraid of where this would lead to or you might have doubts about how the relationship would pan out in the future. So it's very, it can be that you spend a bit of time away from that person or, or not communicating with them because even though they're there and there is this thing that's happened between you two, it could be that you you find that uh, the love, the, you it's almost like you're doubting that this can be true. Like it's too good to be true in a way. And there's this, there's this opportunity there, but it's like you're not willing to look at it anymore. Maybe it also feels like it takes too much of effort to, to do so. Uh, there are moments when it certainly doesn't feel like that. And that's represented here by the two of cups. But there's... A moment where it's like too much of a good thing, you know, four of cups is like too much of a good thing. You become a bit bored with it. You kind of carry on with your life because you're not sure of what to expect with this person. You know, you think you know what's going on, but you you're not. It's almost like you're not willing to excavate more to find out more about this person because it's almost like you formed some kind of distrust about about them. And I'm not going to say that anything, it's anything that they've done because it looks to me like they're a pretty lovely person and at least you recognize that. But it's it's you. It's you who's choosing to kind of step away, um, to take some silence, to move away, to go inward, to to leave that that cup that's there, just hanging out. And, and you're letting... It's like this wonderful things happen and you're letting it kind of diminish in a way. Now, that might be because, you know, you might have your reasons for that. Maybe there's other stuff going on in your life. Maybe there's things with regard to your own personal healing and well-being that needs to be taken into account. Um, maybe it's just not the right time, okay? Now, as you enter the, the later, as you go later in the year, what you're going to find here is that um, there's there seems to be a lot of clarity uh, in terms of, what it is that you want, what it is that you're feeling. You might share this clarity perhaps with the same person here or perhaps with somebody else. But you're very clear about what you want and what you feel like and and you, you're very um, clear about what is important to you as well and what you're willing to uh, tolerate, what you, what you want in your life. You're not, you know, feeling all warm and fuzzy. You're feeling quite clear-headed and... and um, you, you, it's just, you know, it's very much you thinking or feeling with your head and as opposed to your heart and, and, and just kind of knowing what's right for you, what's good for you and, and making a decision, you know, as far as that is concerned, as opposed to well, living your life according to those decisions that you've made as a result of your rationality, as opposed to you kind of sinking into your emotions and letting your emotions lead you. As you uh, come to... Uh, later on in the year, as you head to later time in the year, you're going to find that your your situation is shifting, that your 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 kind of financial well being might be shifting. It might be that you are feeling a lot more secure in yourself. It might be that you have a new home. Uh, you have something else that's happened that's elevated your status or elevated your living environment. Or it could be that you're just feeling a lot more confident in yourself. Whereas, you know, here you are kind of like almost like a teenager and here you are like a young adult. Then you've kind of gained the clarity that you need to in adulthood. And here you're uh, like a mature adult, you know, somebody who's who understands the value 
of things, that understands the value of material things, that really enjoys pleasurable things, material things as well, that can really value and look after things. And it could be that you have a new home and your your headspace is there. It could be that you have a new um, kind of career path, which involves products or goods or something like this, and your headspace is there. You are the the queen of your world at this moment. And it's not, uh, the, the you know, the, you're in charge of your world, right? And you, it's not like you need to, your headspace is just different. You know, you're not feeling bored here. You're not feeling like you need to cut through things here. Uh, and find clarity and and some kind of, you know, cut away the fog. Here you are quite content. You are feeling warm. You're feeling content. You're feeling satisfied. You're feeling grounded. It's it's a very different energy that you have. And then, of course, there's this love that you have here. Underneath all of this, as part of this year, you're going to have this new love that's coming in your life. And I think for a love reading, getting the Two of Cups is always wonderful. But just remember, the Two of Cups is not the beginning and the end all. It's just one spark that occurs. It's just one reckoning. It's just one knowing. Okay? So from that, you needed to move on to something more. And so the feeling I get here is that it might start off like this, but your headspace goes somewhere else. You're thinking about other things. You are... This is eclipsed by life. Life, your life is taking over and you're busy with that. And so this is eclipsed. But what you have here is the beginnings of love. You have, What you have here is love that can be developed, that has a great potential, that is something that can lead to really wonderful things. And I think that there's a lot to look forward to in this time in this um, year for 2024. For some of you, you will finally meet your twin flame or you will finally meet your soulmate. For those, for some of you, you will finally fall in love with somebody. For some of you, you will finally meet somebody who treats you the way that you want to be treated. Okay. And they could be, you know, and I just want to say, don't take it for granted. Like sometimes you can't help it. You know, you do st- start taking it for granted. Or sometimes it's just that these other things in life are pulling you in a different direction. So you can't help but leave that on the back burner for a while. Regardless, there is a love here. There's a seed that's been planted and it's giving rise to new beginnings. There's also new beginnings here. There's a lot of new beginnings in your life in terms of love. And I think here it could be that um, you are being very clear <laughs> This word clear is important for the for today's reading, it seems. But it, it seems, yeah, you are being very clear about what it is that is important to you and what it is that you want. And I feel like it, it, you could be communicating that with somebody, not just having that realization for yourself. In fact, you might be communicating that with that person because you've, you know, you've taken, t- you've fallen in love and you've taken time off to understand what it is that you truly want. You realize what it is that you truly want. You give to yourself what it is that you truly want. And then you allow the love to blossom in your life. And you are allowing this love that came from the spark to flourish. And, you, you know, to you allow, you're allowing the seed to be planted so that it can go further. I think it can be an amazing year for you for 2024 in terms of love. I think also... It could be a year where you give yourself something that you haven't been able to give yourself before in terms of knowing what it is that you want. And uh, and also, this is such a gift. You know, you have to understand this is such a gift to be able to meet somebody who you, you know, it's like a namaste thing. The divine in me acknowledges the divine in you. You kind of understand, you click with each other. It's a serendipitous moment. And... To have that in your reading, in a love reading, is just wonderful. I want to say, though, for some of you, it might have happened already. It it, it might, for some of you, it will happen in the first three months of this year or at some point in this year. For others of you, it could have happened already. You could have had this already. And you might already be in this situation. Or you might be leaning towards this year. So this is not a love reading for January 2024. It's a love reading for the whole year. I'm quite curious to see 
how it is that this pans out. I think this is going to be bringing a lot to you and a lot to your love life uh, in a way, in unexpected ways. And it could be bringing you quite a lot of justice in your life. It could be giving you, it could be cutting away something from the past that's been holding you back from moving forward. It could be, here you could be changing your your home environment and that leads you to bringing love into your life. Maybe it's a feng shui thing, you know, that's not giving you, allowing you to have love in your life or not uh, progressing, allowing your love to progress in your life. Uh, perhaps it's it's just that you need to move house. Perhaps it's something, you maybe you need to move away from somebody. Okay, but when you've done that, you are coming into a great situation in your life. All right, so I'm wishing all of you a wonderful year of love in 2024. May you all find the love that you might be looking for. And for those of you who have love in your life, may it uh, grow to greater heights. Okay, many, many blessings from Kismet Rising. All the best to you. And for those of you who've chosen the third option, it's the Whimsical Tarot. And we're asking what can we expect in terms of love for 2024? And what do we need to be aware of? What do we need to prepare for? And what do we need to be cautious of? What are the warnings? And what can we look forward to in terms of love in 2024? And so for those of you who've chosen the option number three, I'm using the whimsical tarot. And the cards that we have definitely indicate that you'll have love in your life this year. Uh, the quality of love, however, and the things that one has in one's life has something to be aware of. So we have the two of cups, which is basically a recognition of another. Um, it's one soul seeing another. It's a kind of relationship or a, an interaction rather. Let's say it's an interaction with someone where you feel like you know them and they feel like they know you. It's the serendipitous moment that you have with each other. And you kind of, you know, feel like you know this person really well. They feel like they know you really well. It might be that they, they don't even need to, you might have just met them, but you feel like you know them intimately. You have some kind of intu intuitive connection with each other. And... Um, that progresses on to a, a king of cups, which is reversed. Now, this can either refer to you or that person in the relationship. And for, th for those of you who are watching this, you're going to each have different experiences. So the king of cups represents somebody who is full of emotion and is not able to necessarily have a handle on those emotions. So it could be that they are using manipulation or control techniques or some kind of underhanded behavior. They might also just be dishonest. They might be somebody who is a kind of um, a lover boy, you know, kind of like a Romeo, that, uh, somebody who's very charming and, and very lovely, but they can't uh, keep their hands off of other people uh, as well. They just love more than one person. So you have this King of Cups. And for as I said, for each of you, it's going to uh, pan out differently. A King of Cups reversed is also somebody who's quite blocked in terms of their emotions and being able to manage their emotions. So they feel really deeply and they feel very sensitively. But they are very sensitive, is what I'm trying to say. But they aren't able to regulate their emotions very well. So it comes out in different ways. They do things that maybe try to kind of make you comfortable, so comfortable that you won't leave them. Um, they might do something that 
uh, yeah, they made like do everything for you, you know, treat you really, really well. But at the same time, doing it in a way that is not necessarily good for you. It's it's weakening you rather than than strengthening you. They're not an equal partner in the relationship. So here you have the two of cups and that person is this amazing person who is that 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 equal to you and you might feel that you've met the one but that person can transform into this reverse king of cups and we don't know if that's the case it could be that you meet somebody else here who is that uh reversed king of cups and as i said if i was reading for one of you um like just you individually i'd be or even two or three people i'd be able to tell you exactly what it is for each of you but uh yeah as i'm reading in public for the, for a whole lot of people I need to be a bit more vague in terms of the interpretations uh, because it can apply to any number of people who are still to visit the channel and watch this video. So this um, this King of Cups, it's somebody who's, you know, who's probably been through a fair bit in their lives and they haven't really been able to manage their emotions very well. And so they've morphed into somebody who's not able to um healthily exhibit their emotions so they exhibit their emotions in a manner that is not necessarily honest okay and they know they they may be blocked in a way that they're not able to express their emotions to you as well but they have a a lot of emotions and it could be that you know a king of cups usually is like this when they they can also be somebody who loves you really deeply really really loves you but they aren't able to manage their emotions and the intensity of their emotions. And therefore, it comes off as a reversed king of cups because they resort to underhanded techniques and tactics to to get your attention and to maintain your attention. OK, then we have the lovers that are reversed as well. Now, the way I read this card well, it, it reads differently in different situations, but the way I read this card is that there is a closeness that you can attain, which has been sparked off here by the Two of Cups. But there's something in the way of that. And I would I would guess that this King of Cups reversed is, is what is um, in the way. It, it's like there's, there's a situation where you can, you know, really have the best, have a most amazing relationship with each other. And but there's just something that's not okay about it. There's just something that's a little bit off and something that needs to be worked on. And what you need is you need both parties to work on it for it to work. But there might be one party here who's not able to work on it. And this might represent you, by the way, it doesn't necessarily have to represent another person. So, yeah. So you have the love situation where love is within reach. A fantastic partnership is within reach, but there's an inability to be able to grasp all of the benefits and all of the blessings that come with that. And the, uh, yeah, and so that's one um, situation. There could also be a situation where you you might be faced or one of you might be faced with somebody else coming into the the equation. There might be somebody else coming into the equation. There might be some kind of temptation almost because the next card that we have here is the devil that is uh, reversed as well. And this can refer to temptation. This The devil is often temptation, but the devil reversed will refer to temptation that's been acted upon as well. So there might be the presentation of somebody else in this situation and one party or maybe both parties acting upon a lust that they might have. Um, the the lovers here may also refer to uh, just being just having to make a choice actually about whether you you are able to stay with this person, whether you love this person enough to be able to contend with their um, their unresolved conflicts and difficulties that hold them locked into a particular space. So the lovers might be you having to make a decision about this love that doesn't meet your expectations, perhaps, or, or is failing to meet your expectations. It has the, the the potential to meet your expectations, but it's failing to meet your expectations at this point. So those are the kind of issues that you, or the kind of situations, the kind of things that are going to come up for you that you're going to be dealing with as the year goes by. 
The devil year reversed can refer to a situation where you feel trapped by somebody. It could refer to somebody trying to control you, uh, somebody controlling you, uh, doing whatever they can to control you and control all of your actions in ways that you might not even be aware of. It could be, it could refer to somebody who, um, this King of Cups reversed and this devil here makes me think that you're dealing with somebody who has some kind of narcissistic traits. Okay. It could refer to somebody who can be, have some kind of sociopath traits as well. They're not necessarily a sociopath, but they may have some sociopathic traits. It could be that this person is trying so hard not to lose you and they can't overcome this difficulty that they have, that they resort to behaving in a manner that is more controlling of you, um, kind of planning their control of you as well. I would suggest that you go to therapy with this person or try to seek some help with when, when you are confronted with the situation and rather not deal with it alone because it'll, it's, it's quite a lot to have to deal with and to manage by yourself. Um, with regard to the devil the reversed, you could also be with somebody who is um, using sex to control you. They could be using sex to manipulate you or control you. They could be engaging in practices with you that are perhaps harming you physically or uh, emotionally, psychologically, sexually, uh, mentally. Okay. So it, you have to be quite careful here of who you're engaging with and what you're engaging with. Um, it could also be somebody who's in the situation to just get what they want out of it and to leave, not necessarily taking your needs and your love into account. So you might be with somebody who you've fallen deeply in love with. You're engaging in uh, an intimate relationship with them and it's all wonderful and amazing, but their intentions are just to enjoy what they can get from it and they plan to move on at some point so they're not as sincere as um as you are so the devil reverse can be just as ben something as benign as that they're just not as sincere as you are they're not putting the amount of effort into the relationship that you are so yeah it doesn't have to be all those really hardcore uh things that i suggested but rather it could just be something quite benign as they're not able to fulfill your needs. They're aware of the fact that they're not able to fulfill your needs, but they're hanging around anyway and um, kind of engaging with you, knowing that they are not going to be able to give you what you need. OK, now what we have here also in this year, and I think it's very important, is a new beginning. It's a new beginning with a lot of hope, with a, a gift a gift almost, you know, the Ace of Pentacles is often a gift. It could, for some people, refer to a, preg a pregnancy, okay? But I don't see any other cards here suggesting that, so it might not be that. Um, it can, yeah, it can. I think that the Ace of Pentacles is a gift. It's a gift of a new beginning. It's a gift where you're able to enjoy the benefits and reap the benefits of something that you've sold already. So it might be that you, you put a lot into this relationship. Uh, perhaps you, you move in with somebody here and then you find out that they have all these unresolved issues and you try to make a decision as to what you do with it. They start exhibiting that in weird ways that makes you uncomfortable. But then what you've gotten out of this is, you know, and you could decide whether you leave them or, or not leave them. But what you've gotten out of this is some kind of stability that you've created, maybe because you've created this apartment, maybe because you've furnished it and you have a home for yourself now that you have not had before. It could, that's just one interpretation. It could be that there's a gift of seeing that comes through here, uh, of being able to see all of these things. And that in itself is a gift. And you're able to move on from that or work with that or work with this person to overcome their difficulties. So this Ace of Pentacles is definitely a gift. It's definitely something that comes along that's to your benefit, that's going to help you and help balance all of this here as well. Because these cards here are very, well, you've got two major arcana cards, but this is 
this is quite emotional. These cards are quite emotional. It's very much in the emotional realm. But here you have something that's a grounding energy. It's a grounding energy that's a very joyful energy as well. It's very, it's grounded, but it's joyful. It's happy. It's enjoying. It's enjoying the, the material things. It could be that you enjoy, you know, you begin a new habit and you cook a as you start cooking, maybe this person's manipulating you in terms of trying to making you prepare all the the meals. And what what comes from it is that you become a really good cook. And you you know maybe you start a YouTube channel and you start showing your 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 cooking to people. But something comes out of this situation that is really very positive for you, and has a gr the the potential to become much greater and much much more positive. Could it be this relationship? Absolutely. It could be that at the early on, you know, you fall in love with each other. You, uh, they start exhibiting, or you start exhibiting these qualities here, which are, you know, leaning on the side of manipulation. There's a decision to be made. You choose to stay around. It may get worse as you are trying to work through all of those things. You're working through all of it, and that is a gift. And from the time that you've worked through it, you have received the reward. Uh, of those, uh, of that you've been waiting for and you're able to move on. And this is the new beginning in your relationship, okay? So it starts off with all these quirks here. Could be that you are uh, also in love with somebody who's not able to, somebody who's really, really sensitive. They recognize you, you recognize them. Uh, you reckon, They recognize the feelings that they have for you. They're doing everything they can to fight it. OK, they're doing everything they can to avoid the, the, the relationship and it starts driving them crazy in a way. It starts to um, to really play on their mind. It starts to really mess with them and their balance, their mental balance and acuity. And so they've come out of that situation and they've decided to give this a chance. And that's your new beginning. OK, it could be you that's in that situation where you meet somebody and then you're resisting it and you maybe, you know, not showing them how you feel. You're not wanting the relationship and that starts messing with your head. You know, you kind of just like consumed with thoughts of this person and you. Yeah, the devil reverse can be obsession. They obsessed with you. You obsessed with them. But then what comes out of it is something really beautiful. And, you know, perhaps there can be the start of a wonderful relationship. I would read the, the Ace of Pentacles as in a relationship situation. It can be the beginning uh, of a beautiful, beautiful. new relationship. Uh, the It's both people having decided here that you've, you, you want to be in this relationship together. Okay. And there's a gift that comes from that. Now, as I said, it could just be that... Going through all of this and working through all of this is actually giving rise to you having a new beginning in your life. It could be you having the realization that, you know, you're learning something about yourself because of this this person. It could be that you fall in love with somebody and you ask yourself why, because this person is manipulative. They're holding back on the emotions. You, you don't know where you stand with them. You're obsessing about them. But then you, you you look into your life and you look into your circumstances and you try to understand why is it that you're still attracted to this person. And that is in itself the gift because with that comes healing and with that comes the ability for you to move on. You know, the pentacle is a wheel and it could be that, you know, in a sense representing a kind of like an essence of the wheel of fortune where something shifts as a result of that, something fated, something destined shifts as a result of that. And I see the Ace of Pentacles truly being that shift or that new opportunity to move into something that's better for you and for those around you and that are associated with you. All right. So I wish you a fantastic 2024. May you have a lot of love in your life. May you have all the blessings that you need to be able to protect yourself, look after yourself and allow the love to flow in your life. Many blessings from Kismet Rising. And so for those of you who've chosen the Tower of the Spirit, which is the fourth option, we're asking the question, what can we expect in terms of love in 2024?
So for those of you who've chosen this option, um, I see what I see here is very much uh, there are options for love. There are options for um, relationships here, but there's a lot of options for self-growth and self-work and just being able to understand yourself a lot better in this year than you would normally. So the cards that we have are the four of earth, which is practically your four of pentacles, and that's reversed. The card caption reads power. Then we have the one of water, which is your ace of wands. I mean, sorry, your ace of cups. We have the cage, which is your ten of wands, and you have the father of wind, which is like your king of swords. And you have the mother of water, which is your queen of cups in the traditional tarot. So for sure you have somebody here in this deck, uh, the father of wind, he's the king of swords, who is not able to really uh, get in touch with these emotions. Um, it's somebody who's, you know, perhaps quite incisive, quite articulate in their manner. They could be some, a professor or some academic or some, or somebody who's very good at words, somebody who's a writer, perhaps, or even a reporter, somebody who's a journalist, perhaps, somebody who writes something, uh, somebody who's able to articulate themselves very, very well. So somebody who debates, okay, not necessarily a politician, but somebody who's a debater. And this person is not able to really unlock themselves from themselves in order to be able to allow love in their lives. Now, this could represent somebody else or it could represent you. But, you know, as you begin the the year, it's like you are able to kind of let go in a way. You're able to... Um, Take what it is that you have built until now and allow yourself to to move ahead in some way or to release yourself from it. It's not a cage for you anymore. Uh, it's not something that you need to define yourself by. This could also represent somebody else in your life, somebody who's using their work, who's hiding behind their work, somebody who's standing behind their work very often and, and just standing behind their professional role. Perhaps it's somebody that you have in your life or perhaps it's you who's standing behind your um, the, the work that you do and engaging with people only in the capacity of the, the work that you do. You know, if you're a teacher or if you're a healer or a nurse or a doctor or some kind of, you know, a manager or entrepreneur, whatever it is that you are, it's or whoever it is that, that that this represents in your life, they are hiding behind their they have been hiding behind their work. And it seems here that just for a moment um they are able to allow themselves not to to do that. Okay. So they step out from behind their work, their shield, and which gives them power, which gives them strength which they very clearly define themselves by and their world has been consumed by all these th these four pentacles here that they've made you know um maybe it's a writer maybe they've written four books or they've a filmmaker who's made f four films or something like this but this person is st able to step out from behind that and for them it's they don't necessarily always think that's a good thing it might seem to them as a weakness or a move that's weak but they've understood for a minute that that's not the case and that they are able to step out from behind their mask in fact and present themselves with you they might have done that and th what it does is that it gives it gives rise to an open channel uh, the question is, are you willing to accept this open channel? Are you ready to accept this open channel? So it's almost like somebody here, it, that's one interpretation, okay? It could be also that somebody here is um, using what they have, their material goods or well-being or wealth to be able to 
to entice you in a particular direction. So it might be somebody who's saying, hey, you know, why don't we go and live together on a ranch somewhere? Or why don't we go together and and rent a house somewhere or live somewhere? Or why don't we start up a business together? And why don't we actually um, do something together? But this person is doing it because they don't want to let you go. They don't want to let you go. And so they doing something so that they don't let you go. Now, it could also apply to that other person who's hiding behind their work often and they don't want to let you go. That's why they come out from behind for a second. In This card can also represent somebody, oh, yourself, who is um, a bit bewildered because you cannot use your um, your work as a shield. So it could be that you're a bit bewildered. You don't know how to behave. You don't know how to interact. You may have lost your social skills because you've been in your work for so long or buried in your work for so long that you don't even know how to interact with people. But there's a need to do so. There's a need to under- to go out there and to interact with others or to engage with one other person at the very least. So... Here we have the card that is um, one of water. And this is an ace of cups. And it's reversed. Now, I would say that an ace of cups reversed is quite a strong card as it stands. Because it still signals this beginning of love. Or this beginning of an emotional development. Or this beginning of emotional healing. And being able to uh, clear away the clutter that might be uh, taking up space in your life, that might be clouding how you really feel. So I think that when I see this uh, one of water that's reversed here and it says open channel, I feel literally like you are clearing the debris away from the channel, from your channel, you know, like your your waterway. And you you clearing, clearing out the debris from the entryway of the waterway so that it can flow more clearly and more, more more force, more energy. And the card is reversed. So I think here it might signal that there is love in your life and it's a love that has great potential, but you are perhaps not able to see that or you're not able to engage with it. It might be that this person here who's been hiding behind their role uh, as a professor, as an employer, as somebody like that, has finally stepped out from behind their their curtain and they're engaging with you and you don't know what to do with this. You don't know what to do with this. So you aren't able to let that love just flow in that way. You kind of maybe putting the brakes on it in some way. Oh, it could be that you are just uh, scared. You could be scared of where this could lead to. So here, it's the 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 card, the advice that's given is to overcome that, to be able to allow that love to flow at your pace, at the pace that you feel comfortable, obviously. But don't use the debris that's in your life from previous experiences and previous relationships or past uh, interactions or maybe your childhood even to stand in the way from allowing love to flourish in your life, Okay. You just have to clear that channel, clear that space, clear that pathway so that love can flow in your life. And it could be this this could also represent somebody else who's having difficulty with that, or it could represent you. Uh, As I said in previous readings, it's too, uh, I can't be more specific because there's so many of you who this reading is for. And um, I can't, yeah, I can't be more specific. If I was reading for one person, I'd be able to tell whether it's you or the other person. So here we have the Ten of Fire, which is your Ten of Wands, and it's a cage. Now, I think that, you know, at this particular point in time, when you look at your love life for 2024, you what that, that's what we are seeing, okay? I don't think these cards are set in stone. I don't think that this necessarily has to be the case. For instance, if you clear away this channel, this waterway, this this entryway so that the love can flow into your life or through you to others, then I don't think you'll be in a cage. 
You won't be overwhelmed. You won't be feeling oppressed by your own emotions. You won't be feeling overwhelmed with what life has presented you with by this person's offering or your own intense emotions. You can come out of that. So if you've done this, then I think that this card will be different. These cards will be different. So I, I, I just want to mention that because obviously these cards are a snapshot in time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it will always occur in this particular way. So here, once again, I think that it's because you are not able to... Here, yeah, this is like this cleaving to power, okay? Having to hang on to the power that you have. Having to maintain those boundaries through the power that you have. Here, it's about just bluntly not allowing love into your life. And where do you find yourself? Obviously in the cage. Obviously feeling oppressed, overwhelmed, like it's too much, like you don't know what to do, how you're going to get out of it. And so the advice here is to slowly calm down, allow yourself to allow to have more nourishing activities in your life, allow yourself to have more quiet time, um, to do perhaps some meditation, some um yoga, something that's going to bring you to your center, some Tai Chi, some Qigong, things like this that allow you to come back to your center. Some breathing exercises, some breathing meditations, um, something like this to overcome this feeling of being overwhelmed in your life. Because when you're in this situation here, you can't really let love in your life. You are just going to be so overwhelmed. Your cup is full already. It's full with not good things and therefore you cannot let love into your life empty that cup fill it with clean water here and then try to maintain that water or try to clean out that water that's in your cup already by healing it by giving yourself the attention that you need to be able to do that okay so i think that it could also be for some people it could also be that you've reached the uh, an end of a cycle in your relationship and it causes some degree of overwhelming feelings. It could cause some degree of um, stress in your life. Yeah, stress. And it could make you feel like this relationship, the way in which it's been uh, going, is making you feel caged. Make It's making you feel trapped. And so you need to look at your situation in a different manner from a different perspective. Or perhaps you need to have a ch sit down and a chat with your partner um, so that you can see where you stand with them and tell them how you feel so that you don't have to feel like you're being caged. This card okay. here, the, the King of Swords or the Father of Wind reversed. As I mentioned at the beginning of this reading, it, it tells me that this is somebody who maintains uh, barriers around them. They're not able to leave from their barriers. They could be a successful lawyer or um, some kind of academic or a writer and they have very high boundaries around them and they won't let those boundaries down. They could be hiding behind that, whatever it is their reason for choosing to have these high, very strong boundaries is their reason. They may just never be ready they may not be ready now and they may never be ready in this lifetime to be able to put down those boundaries. But this person is in your life at this moment and they are showing up as somebody who is not willing to let go of those boundaries. And that is something that you will need to deal with and perhaps accept or not accept and then decide what you do with regard to that. But this is a situation where you are feeling really overwhelmed, maybe like you were having to take on all the work or all the stress in this relationship and they are just blocked and cold and not allowing flow in the relationship. So there's a lot of tension in this reading here. You know, there's this blocked emotions here. There's this cleaving on to power. There's this feeling of oppression and being trapped. There's this inability to let go and just simply live and to let the guards down because there's an inability to feel vulnerability you know but what you have here is this beautiful healing card which is your mother of of water which is your queen of cups 
And through all of this, it shows me that there's a huge understanding, huge nurturing of yourself, huge ability to understand what this person is going through here. That's either you or somebody in your life or many people in your life. They could be all four different people here. Um, underneath all of this is the ability to understand and to great, gain deep wisdom and to intuit what it is that each person is going through, to understand it from their point of view, to have compassion because you've understood it from their point of view, to have patience with them because they are going through something that they cannot change or they find it difficult to change and they don't know how to go about changing it. So there is a lot of beauty in all of this here. And I think that this card at the end of it all shows me that this channel that was blocked here, where it says open channel, but it's reverse, so I'm seeing it as being blocked, um, is something that's opened. Because in order to be able to come to this stage, to graduate to this level, it shows me that there's a great, you have great understanding in your life. You have great knowledge and wisdom and intelligence, emotional intelligence, to be able to understand this and deal with all of this. And so I think that 2024 is a year where, in terms of love, you might be dealing with a lot of different uh, personalities, or you might be dealing with one personality who's going through all different types of transformations or struggling, fighting the transformation. But ultimately, it brings you to, uh, and you could be in a relationship this entire time with this person. You could be feeling very loved by this person, but there's all these underlying things that are taking place. On the other hand, it could be that you meet that person, you meet that one, you meet all these different persons, or you meet one person and they exhibit all these different aspects of their personality. Regardless, at the end of the day, you are going to be benefiting quite a great deal from these interactions that you've had with these people because it brings you so much of understanding and wisdom because you've had these interactions and you're actually in a very good space. You're able to uh, understand your emotions. You're able to measure your emotions. You're able to measure your reactions and actions and you're able to um, truly, truly know yourself very, very well and know yourself in regard to other people and how you behave with regard to other people or how you react really to others and when they hold, withhold their love, when you feel overwhelmed, um, when they are using ways and means to kind of get your attention and to grab onto you without actually being sincere about it. So I think that this is a really beautiful card here to have. Uh, because regardless of anything and everything that's going on in your year in terms of love, you have this. And whether you're working towards it or whether you have it the whole time, it could differ for each of you. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, this is the end result and you're going to be fine. You're going to be just okay through the time. So I wish you all a very he healing year in terms of love. May you're able to stand your ground and look after yourself in whatever, in, with regard to whatever you will face this year or would, ha would have to deal with. You know, sometimes this card here could just be feeling stressed. Uh, this could just be not, you know, in allowing somebody's love to come through to you. This could mean just trying to hold on to things the way they are and not letting it move on. And this could mean just being stubborn in an argument and not saying sorry, okay? So it doesn't have to be this level of intensity uh, which I've described for every one of you, okay? For, it might be the, that way for one person, but it could just be this, this, what I just said right now. And here's you in it all, being calm, compassionate, being patient, being able to understand your emotions, being able to understand how to express your emotions and when to express your emotions and and having learned that and that is something that many many more people could uh, benefit from or deal with I uh, will not deal with but be yeah 
they could many more people could benefit from having these qualities here that you have or you've gained through this time. So I think it's going to be a good year regardless. And I think there is room for love for sure, as we have here, the Ace of Cups. And there's definitely room for improvement as far as love is concerned, as far as the um, things are concerned. What I would say, though, is this is a very balanced reading. You have a pentacle, you have a cup, you have wands, and you have of swords. It's an extremely balanced year in terms of your emotional well-being and in terms of what you are dealing with or what you're being faced with. And so you should be actually okay through it all. All right, wishing you many, many blessings and may 2024 bring you lots and lots of love and beauty in your life. And for those of you who've chosen the chrysalis um, tarot, we are asking the question, what is it that we can expect in love in 2024? What does love hold for us in 2024? What do we need to be aware of? What do we need to be warned of? What can we expect and what can we look forward to? Okay, so for those of you who've chosen the option number five, we have the uh, the chrysalis tarot and we've asked the question, what can we expect in love in 2024? And we have the cards, the six of stones, three of scrolls, five of mirrors, six of spirals and the companion. So your six of stones is actually a card. Um, it's your six of pentacles. It's about being able to receive something from someone. It's about an... Um, a relationship which is a give and take often where somebody you know one one person is once it's like a kind of i scratch your back you scratch mine it could be that you are in a partnership of sorts or you're in a relationship where it's beneficial for you both because one person is doing something for you and you're doing that something for that person as well and it can be a situation where that can be sometimes in balance or it can be in imbalance so it's a card where i think that you may need to look at whether that's in balance or not if it's not in balance then you may be paying a price for that in some other way so if you're receiving more than you are giving in that relationship it may put off the balance and you may be paying for that in another way which is not, not necessarily what you need to be doing or what you want to be doing if that person is receiving more and you're giving more it could be that you're feeling the strain of that in the relationship so i think that uh, i think that you know whereas give and take might be a gift and might be you know having love for, for another or showing your love for another it can be that when that is not in balance, that you are feeling the strain of, of that, okay? However, 
here it could be simply it's not the card is not in the reverse it's just like that and i think that what it is is something that you are you are in partnership you are in a comfortable space with each other where things are fairly balanced okay and if they're not balanced then that is something that needs to be resolved it's followed by the three of scrolls which is traditionally the three of swords and I think here what you're doing is you're sniffing what something that might be the truth. It might be that you learn about something that you didn't actually know about uh, in your relationship. It might be that you find out something about somebody. Perhaps you were just, you know, in a in a kind of professional relationship with somebody here or in a friendly relationship and you're not, in fact, in a relationship and then you hear here that this person is actually with somebody else that they've engaged in a relationship with somebody else and you hear about that and it causes you to feel some degree of rejection some degree of uh, sadness some degree of sorrow actually so there is this harmony that you have here and in some decks the six of pentacles is actually called harmony and here you have this card uh, which ultimately is leads to some degree of heartbreak it could be sorrow it could just be a rejection and there might there is something there that you're sniffing which you find out is you find out something that is not going to make you happy okay it's going to make you feel rejected or dejected in some kind of way as you continue here it couldn't it doesn't necessarily mean a breakup here it could just mean that you find out something that your partner has been keeping away from you. Or it could be that your fa your partner has gotten a job in a different state or in a different country. And that brings you sorrow because it means that you'll have to upset your life. It could mean that your partner is just in touch with their ex. And that brings you some degree of discord. And so it could be a, a range of things. It doesn't have to mean the worst it's just a little heartbreak. It's not a huge big deal. It, you will recover from it. It will be okay. All right. I don't see it as being with this kind of solidity and permanence that you have here. I don't see that this is, it's, this is just a, you know, a prick. Uh, it's just uh, like, you know, like a pin prick is what I mean. Uh, not what you're thinking right now. So, um, so it's something that, uh, yeah, it's just something that's going to, you know, cause a little bit of discord in your life. I think that you get over it because you take the time here to heal. Five of mirrors is your, is your five of cups. You taking, you learn of something, it causes you to feel sorrow. You take the time to heal, to lick your wounds here. You are moving on. You are actually ensuring that you are taking the time that you need to overcome the harm, the, the suffering, the, the pain that you have experienced. And in the Chrysalis Tarot, this, the, the key word for this, this card is forgiveness. So I think it might be that you learn to get over or forgive the decision that this other person's taken or the news that you've learned about this person. Whatever it is, you, you, it's you gaining healing through this process and you are successfully healing through forgiveness and through this time it, you are being set you're setting the record straight here you're setting things back on their path you're not harboring hurt you're not um you're not suffering uh you know it's not a prolonged suffering you are emerging from this pain that you've experienced and you are actually moving on. You're rising from this depth of of whatever pain you've experienced there, whatever disappointment that you might have experienced. You're moving on from it. You're moving on from any adversity that you might have experienced and you are healing. Okay? It's and you this card is really a card of healing, taking the time to heal, and you have done it. What you find yourself where you find yourself is um, in a, a state of victory as you move along. As you move along, you have the six of spirals, which is generally your six of wands. And you are in a state where you're able to uh, really 
appreciate what you've been through, what you've had, what you're experiencing currently. And it's a card of success. It's termed success in the, in the Chrysalis Tarot. And it's something that, you know, you've been persistent. A, you've accomplished a goal. A wish has been granted. You have actually moved on from whatever it is that was causing you pain and sorrow. And whatever, wherever a relationship or a situation may have become a bit stale because of this, a routine, you've moved on from that. You've persisted. You've worked through whatever needs to be worked through. And you've come out of it successful, successfully. If you're not in a relationship, and this is just uh, something that is, you, you're a single person, you're hoping and looking for love. I would say that you're getting along quite fine in your life. Things are more or less in balance, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. Maybe your work is actually taking up quite a lot of your headspace. And you could, can feel a degree of sadness, perhaps not because of something that's happened, but because you come upon the realization that, or, or a kind of understanding of yourself, that you are not exactly perhaps where you want it to be. That could be, you know, someday you just kind of feel that way. And you work through that disappointment and you come out of it and you're a success. Okay. Regardless of what's going on here, there's he great healing that's taking place and there's success that comes as a result of it. And you have also here, this is also a card of transition, of moving on, of growth. So you could be also moving on from here. You could be having growth. The card here that sums it all up and that's, that's also a part of all of this in this year of 2024 is the companion. And you have the king of wands here, the king of spirals. He's in the upright position uh, in this uh, deck. And so you have a person in your life who is really robust, full of energy, extremely energetic, has a lot of things that they're doing, very determined, very, um, uh, you know, somebody who might be quite innovative as well. Somebody who's quite inspired. They're like, you know, inspired inspiration on steroids in fact and they are really busy they're really busy doing a whole lot of things they may have their day packed they may be quite spotman uh, a spotman what is the word um yeah they could be quite quite a spot person or quite um they could be quite spotty <laughs> you know what i mean so it's it's something that you this person is representing that now this is somebody that you could become as a, as a result of all of this, and you here you're taking very good care of your body, you're taking care of your mind, you're filling your life up with all kind of whole, wholesome activities, you're eating healthily, you are, you know, you have a yearning for life, you're going at it, uh, and you are feeling very fulfilled at the same time, you're in complete control of your life and your energy. Or it could be that you meet somebody who's like that, and they are a blessing in your life. And they are offering you something. They are offering you something and they are just willing to take you to new heights, which is what the the the, the companion year would, would do. It's it's the card of the companion, so it's somebody that you could enter into a relationship with, or maybe you have been in a relationship with from the very beginning and there's been some heartbreak along the way, but now this person is solidly there. It could be that um it could be that you are um, you are meeting somebody who's a brand new person who is your going to be your companion and who is going to be in your life. So if you are with somebody right now that you're not 100 percent with or you you are with them 100 percent, at least you think it is. But then you find out something about them and you decide to perhaps move on from them or perhaps give the give it a chance to make the relationship work. Either way, whatever you do, decide to do, you'll have success at the end of it. And there's a great possibility that you will either meet somebody who will become your companion in, in the course of this year, or you could be meeting this king of wands, this king of spirals, himself or herself or itself. 
or you could be uh, simply allowing yourself to be this person and becoming this person yourself. Or it could be that this partner that you have has become that in your life and you feel very strong as a result of this person being in your life. This person is not just um, there, they are supporting you. It's not just a give and take. This person is, you know, your cheerleader and they're doing so in the most elegant and the most, um, the, the in a very sexy manner, you know, in a way, in a way that is very, it's very in inspiring, actually. This person is truly somebody who inspires. So I think that you are going to have um, quite a quite an interesting year in terms of, you know, where you end start and where you end. I would say that at the time when you come to the end of your year, you are going to have somebody in your life if you haven't started off with somebody in your life. So I think that's a very definite case of that. And you will have success. Whatever you go through, through this year, you will have success and you will have somebody in your life will be your companion. So I don't think that you have much to worry about. I don't think that you are, I think that, you know, there may be some difficulties uh, that you might face along the way. And but you definitely overcome it with this healing attitude that you have and this perseverance that you show and that you, you are going to be okay. Um, I think that, um, this person can also be somebody who's, um, who's who can be quite um, busy, and in that way you might experience this person as a little bit pushy because maybe they want you to do stuff with them. Um, it, but they will always have you know your best interests at heart. It could be that um, if if when this person when you ask about somebody's feelings for you and this king of wands comes up it doesn't necessarily mean that they're there for you and that they are at your side or that they are even thinking about you they may be thinking about you in some kind of lustful manner but they are not necessarily thinking about you in terms of love and but as it's come out in this position in this spread here um which is just a general spread of love for 2024 i think that this person is actually going to be um, by your side. And the one thing that the, ki that the King of Spirals can do, the King of Wands can do, is that they can bring quite a lot of lightness to your life. They can shake things up in your life, you know, and just uh, bring quite a lot of lightness. So you, you are taking life not so seriously as you might have done uh, before. Okay. So I, I do think whatever it is that you might have difficulty with here, it would be also worth it to sit down and discuss it, perhaps with this person if this person's already in your life because they are quite open to meeting you halfway and to uh under to engaging with you and they your cards have not come up in the reverse position and so i don't think that you are dealing here with the companion in the in the shadow version of the companion or the the, the king of wands i think you are actually going to be dealing with somebody who's got quite a lot of energy quite a lot of love they're not willing to they're not um shy to show their love they are quite passionate and so you are able you will be able to find some results if you are feeling rejected if you are feeling some kind of heartbreak you can actually talk with this person and you don't need to engage in feelings of disappointment you can actually engage directly with this person all right so um yeah that's my reading for you i hope it works out well and i wish for you that you have a beautiful year of love in 2024 and may all else go well in your life as well and blessings abound from kismet rising